Can you see her? Just holler if she moves towards me. This is the most dangerous situation in the woods with a bear. We are hunting morels. What are you bringing into the woods, Priscilla? <clears throat> well, we're just on a short um, outing, so I'm not taking a backpack or anything, but I had breakfast and I'm well hydrated. I'm taking my car key, my phone to take pictures, two paper bags in case we find some mushrooms we want to collect, and a knife. Awesome. Sounds great. We're about to leave the road or the trail and head into the woods. Yeah, we're looking for mixed forest with some tulip poplar trees and sort of coves that are moist. So near a creek is a good place to look. And we're looking for bloodroot and mayapples, which um, tend to grow in similar environments to morels. Come on, buddy. Trout lily. Beautiful. That's such a beautiful leaf. Trout lily. I've seen some trillium along here. We didn't find any morels in that last spot, so we jumped back on the road. And now we're jumping back off. The other reason we're actually out here in the woods is because in just a couple days, I have a in-person survival course um, and I'm walking this section of woods that we're going to come out um, and do our course in. So we're doing two things at once. This is not, no one would say this is necessarily ideal morel territory. Though there's, maybe here it is. Um, but we're still checking out this section of woods for the course. It's a place I've spent a lot of time, but I wanted to see it again and kind of what we're dealing with. It's been a few years since I've been out here. What did you say it was called? Uh, Lycopodium is, I think the genus name, I would need to go check that. And then uh, club moss, it's a type of club moss. It's beautiful, look at that. Mm -hmm. It's apparently growing from the same root system, mm -hmm. just the way it forms here. Yeah, it spreads out. But then in places like this, it just is a carpet. It looks like a little evergreen tree Here's some blueberries, right in the middle of the woods. All right, we're walking along across the side of a ridge and we just switched from pine back to a mixed tulip poplar and oak and I'm starting to see trout lilies under my feet so we're gonna start looking in this area for morels. And that's a lot of, honestly, my approach to teaching wilderness survival is awareness and this both internal and external awareness. Awareness of the environment, but also what's going on in your head, because that's the key to surviving, is not losing your mind in the woods, making bad decisions. That's great. When do morels start to come up? Like, what are the other signs you look for? Well, uh, early spring, but it varies quite a bit depending on the temperature of the weather that year. Yeah. Um, I found morels in early April last year and I haven't found any yet this year, so it varies a lot. Um, one of the sayings that I've heard is that you should start looking for morels when the tulip poplar leaves are the size of squirrel's ears. But people have been finding them earlier than that, before the tulip poplar leaves this year. So I think another guideline is uh, expect the unexpected. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so cool. He pooped on me. So gross. We ran into a little patch of chestnut trees. It looks like they may have been planted here. They're in a row. You don't see a lot of chestnut trees out in the woods in the American chestnut almost became extinct 
um, due to a, was it bacteria or, or fungal? Fungi. A fungal disease swept across, totally changed the forest in the area. You do think they're Chinese? I do think they're Chinese chestnuts, um, which are delicious, so it'd be cool to find them when they were fruiting. Um, and the differences between an American chestnut and a Chinese chestnut are um, in the leaf shape. Hang on a second, Chef. And uh, the tip of the leaf right here mm -hmm. on an American chestnut leaf, that little spine yeah. has a distinct hook towards the tip of the leaf. Oh, interesting. And on a Chinese chestnut, it is closer to straight out in the direction it's growing. I wonder if it's a hybrid, though, like it's they planted them out here as part of an experiment. Who knows? That does seem possible in this area. Yeah. Huh. That's that would be a useful thing. thing to do if you were on a survival hike. A useful thing to pick up. Oh yeah. A glass bottle. A glass bottle, that's right. Okay, just walked up on a big mama bear and I'm, this is how close I was. I'm filming and I'm walking away. There's a mama bear down low and there's three babies in the tree. Um, yeah, let's go. This is about the most dangerous situation. Can you see her? Just holler if she moves towards me. This is the most dangerous situation in the woods with a bear because anytime you see a bear, they just get away from you. They run. But when they're with cubs, cubs go up a tree and then the mama bear stays put. <laughs> I've, I've been in this situation watching us multiple times but I've never been charged but still it's like what yeah me either yeah she's standing her ground right next to the base of the tree where the teeny little babies are they are small they're like the size of a chubby house cat <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I'd say it's especially dangerous with a dog but Shep is actually really a pretty chill dog overall so he sees him and he's just like ah oh, whatever I've chased bear before It's about the only time in the woods you'll see a bear and it will just be sitting there staring at you. <laughs> like every other time you just hear a <laughs> crashing and they run off. The only thing I could have been is a little quieter maybe. <laughs> She's still about a hundred yards away up there but we're skirting around her in a way. Did you just smell them, Shep? He's now he's interested. <laughs> yeah. A beautiful little snail. I've seen a lot of air in the woods. That situation though is the only one that gives me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies. I'm not. I wasn't like terrified or anything, but it's just that bear's not going to leave. She won't leave that spot for anything. So if I were to have walked up even closer on her. My eyes were on the ground. It's possible she would have charged, especially she's still watching. having the dog. You can still see her over there. Yeah. Oh, I see her. Yeah, she's a this. Is, she's about a hundred yards now. And the babies are right up there. Yeah, I was only like less than thirty yards from her. Ooh, there's a baby climbing. Baby down. coming down. Okay, so they'll walk off soon if they come down. They're so cute. They're tiny. It's, yeah, it's early. Keeping a watchful eye on them. Crazy. That's so cool. <laughs> Here's Bloodroot, which is one of the other little plants that we're looking for that is often in the area of laurels. And it has a beautiful root. I won't dig this up, but has a beautiful root. If you cut it in half, it looks like it's bleeding orange. The ground here is just covered with all sorts of little edible, fresh edible spring herbs. Uh, chickweed right here. We can get some violets right here. The thing my sister said that I am thankful for is that Shep was on a leash with the bear because, you know, he doesn't know. If he's chased bears before, he doesn't know this is a bear that's not gonna run. She's gonna fight. And so, 
you know, I had him off a leash just a minute before, just for five or 10 minutes. He was running around having a ball and I had just put him back on maybe five minutes before we walked right up on that bear. I don't think I would have gotten hurt, but he could have gotten hurt. So I'm thankful for that. You're Back done. on the road. None so far. That's the cove I found them in. So this is Poplar Cove, right at this comes out right at this Y. Yeah. And there's a spring up there too. Cool. May apples popping up. I can take a step if you want. More bloodroot, one of the plants we're looking for. Many fungi have relationships with trees and morels typically grow under tulip poplar and ash. And that's one of the big things we're looking for. There's more tulip poplar out in these open woods. And so we're walking and looking for tulip poplar groves, basically. When you're in the woods in Western North Carolina, actually anywhere in the Appalachians, you see these per almost perfectly straight trunks. Um, you're looking at a tulip poplar tree. They usually grow on the south slope, though not always. And they like to grow um, at relatively lower elevations. They're not up in the 4,500 range and higher. Um, and they also like to grow right along creeks, whereas you tend to see more oaks and pines higher up. Um, well, oaks are, per, are predominant on the high ridges. Okay, now we're in an area, uh, everything we've been in previous to this moment was just new exploration. Now we're in an area that we've actually, Priscilla's actually found them. So we're going to slow down and really do a slow walk through this area. So far we haven't found any. We're going to start heading back. It may be a little early here. Um, I know there's, I know they're up in some areas, but it just varies depending on where you are. We're going to kind of look at a few more spots just on the way out though. All right, go. You can walk. Well, part of my philosophy as someone who loves to hunt for mushrooms is it's really important to me to approach walking through the woods looking for mushrooms with uh, openness to whatever I find, whether or not that involves the mushroom I'm looking for, yeah. and to not approach it with a consumerist, instant gratification kind of attitude of, yeah. I must receive an investment of what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, walking in the woods is its own reward. <laughs> I agree. Um, it's, it's not like you're going to Walmart and looking for something and they don't have it. So exactly. It's like, oh, we're going to go somewhere else. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel corn. Yeah, I see. It catches your eyes if you're looking for morels. Yeah, it does look like it. Here's a big patch, oh, yeah. too. It does have a similar pattern, and mm -hmm. I could see how you could make that mistake. That's pretty. They like kitten paws. Oh, baby, uh, probably Brito Cruz. Yeah. So pretty. I think they might be white. Oh, yeah. They're super cute. Yeah. With the curve. Oh, I think you know. The um, smooth. We're back on our homestead. 
and back on our property, I'm gonna take you up for a really quick morel mushroom hunt to an area where I found some in the past few days. So hopefully we'll find a few more. Okay, we're way up the hill. Not really a typical morel spot, but we did find them up here. This is on the neighbor's property. And I'll show you a few. It's rained though since I found these, so we may actually find some more. Right now I'm gonna show you how hard morels are to find. They're very challenging mushrooms because they're color. And there's a morel in screen right now. I'll show it to you. Right here. Beautiful. So pretty. Now this is a pine dominated hillside, but here's a little tulip poplar tree. And here is this one morel. My kids use camouflage as a verb, as in camouflaging. So can you see the camouflaging morel? <laughs> this one sticks out a little bit more. And this one looks like it's been here for a few days. The top is starting to wither and it's discoloring a little bit on this side. Well, we weren't able to find any morels in the woods where my sister and I went today. And I wasn't able to find additional ones up here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the morels that I found on this hillside so that they can send their spores out and hopefully become more abundant over time up here. Well guys, thanks for joining me on this adventure where we ran straight into a mama bear with cubs and hunted for beautiful morel mushrooms in the mountains of North Carolina. All right, see you next time.